cool tools built for speed. We'll get down with the pit crew for some heavy lifting. Oh, now, it! See how they change four tires in 13 seconds. What's up? Get it! Then, find out what it's like behind the wheel of a 500 horsepower race car. This is awesome! And check out how they fix wipeouts that go down at 200 miles an hour. Alright guys, we got a lot of damage right side. Plus, a high-tech weather station that gives drivers an edge. This thing right here gives me the cloud cover, the wind speed, the wind direction. We're at the Charlotte Motor Speedway for the inside track on racing's main event. We're getting the all-access pass. Everything you want to see, everything you want to hear, we got the ticket. Hey, I'm Chris Grundy, and today we're putting the pedal down. That's right, it's Cool Tools NASCAR style. We're checking out the tools they use to keep these cars running fast. It's race day at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And more than 150,000 fans are packing in for one of NASCAR's biggest events, the Coca-Cola 600. We've got a chance to follow driver Greg Biffle and his race team for a behind the scenes look at his brand of speed. So you've been racing, but you didn't start in racing. I didn't, I didn't start in racing. I started, uh, you know, my parents own a steel construction company. So I started out, you know, five, six years old, kind of welding stuff together over mm -hmm. on the bench, you know, when my dad wasn't looking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I got a fabricating background, you know, originally. And uh, then that led into building all the roll cages and doing all the stuff in the race cars. And, mm -hmm. and uh, loved cars, loved yeah. fabricating. So it was a natural fit. At his shop, Greg uses the coolest tools. His welding station's equipped with the 3M speed glass helmet that gives a clear view of the job until you need more protection. You can put it on and see through the lens before you strike the arc. And then as soon as the arc strikes, it goes dark instantly. Biffle drives the number 16 Ford Fusion sponsored by 3M for the Roush Fenway Racing Team. He's an 11-year veteran of NASCAR racing with 16 NASCAR wins under his belt. And did I mention I'm a big fan? So I'm driving tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, I'm getting <laughs> behind one of these massive joints i can't wait give me some tips all right go fast and turn left okay. <laughs> don't use reverse okay good, good and good. uh try not to hit anything but before i get driving it's race time baby we're on pit road this is the pace car the coca-cola 600 like all nascar races starts with the pace car leading the field the sweet paint job is the only thing that makes it different from a factory car. It leads the 43 racers in three warm-up laps at about 55 miles per hour. Then, it gets out the way. It's the start of a five-hour race. In that time, cars pull off about 10 times for pit stops. They get 17 gallons of gas, clean windshield, and new tires. So it's just take them off, put them on, fill her up, see ya. Ever wonder how they do their job so fast? Well, I got a chance to find out from the 3M team who call themselves the Pit Bulls. Here we are in the pit practice area where they come a couple days before the race to practice putting these cars down. They got to get in and out of here in less than 13 seconds. That's how fast it happens. Cars roll in at 45 miles an hour, and they gotta get the wheels off the ground fast. And for that, they got the Jackman. So how's this go? All right, jacking 101. Uh -huh. Car stops. You come over, one hand on the small handle, one hand on the big handle. Mm -hmm. Index it, come up to the top of the handle, up it. And that's it. It's that easy. But this ain't no driveway mechanics joint. It's the Pro Racing Jack from MPD Pit Boss, made of aircraft aluminum. It lifts a 3,500-pound race car in one pump, but weighs just 30 pounds. Come around. Come around, turn your body, index it, handle up, jump on it. Yeah! Zip, 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 zip. Next! <laughs> 
It may look like chaos, but the pit bulls run it like a well-oiled machine. Every job on this pit crew is its own specialty. What's your job here? I change front tires on the 3M4 Fusion. The tire changer's tool is his air wrench. Pull the trigger on this mama, and it screams lug nuts on and off at 10,000 RPM. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this might not be as easy as it looks. What's up? I know you can do it faster, I've seen you do it, but that's my first time, it felt pretty good. Of everybody that, that I've ever showed a first time to, mm -hmm. that was by far the fastest first time shot I've ever seen in my life. That's what you heard it here first. Now in the real race, there's no time for talking. Just four tires, gas, and get out the way. Because Biffle's number 16 car is hauling back to the fast lane. Up next, we're kicking it with the crew chief and checking out his rolling command center. I tell you, got me. Then it's a wipeout at 200 miles an hour. All right, guys, we got a lot of damage right side. We'll head to the body shop to see how they put them back together. We got more from NASCAR coming up. Here's a cool fact. On NASCAR's oval tracks, the cars turn and lean left. So they make the right side tires a little softer than the left ones for extra traction. We're following Greg Biffle's number 16 car in NASCAR's longest race of the season. 600 miles, 400 laps. Biffle's the one driving, and he's got a crew of 30 team members who keep the car ready to win. Their boss is the crew chief. He oversees the whole 3M team out of one tricked out truck. What I'm standing on is called the hauler. It's a tractor trailer that brings everything they need for race day. Tools, the car, and up here is where the crew chief sits during the practice runs. I tell you, got it. 3M crew chief Greg Irwin's gonna show me what he's got up here. I have one computer screen up here that's pretty much on a timing and scoring system that NASCAR has hooked up. Tells me how our race cars run in lap times compared to everybody else on the track. That's real good there off the field. Digital radios keep everybody talking. I have one radio that talks to my crew. I have one radio that talks to my engineers. I generally have one radio that helps me listen in on some of the other competitors. You've got... Uh, Changing weather all the time, you know, clouds or whatever. You've got this joint right here, right? Yep. This thing right here gives me the opportunity to look at the cloud cover, the wind speed, the wind direction, precipitation at various altitudes. The Garmin 696 is an aviation quality weather station. It has a 15 mile radius that can predict rain minutes before it starts. That can be the difference sometimes between winning these races and, and not doing very well. Wow, that's amazing. The 3M team puts 60,000 miles on this rig every year, getting to 40 NASCAR races coast to coast. Let's go check out the inside of the hauler. In here, oh, oh, all the fire suits, bam. This is cool tools, right? So I'm gonna bring you back here to where all the cool nuts and bolts, everything goes happens. Oh, boom. The hauler carries more than 100 tools, but the one used most often is a 3M roll lock disc. Attached to an air wrench, the interchangeable discs are the go-to tools for sanding, cutting, and polishing. In the back of the hauler, there's a rolling command center. It's so cool, but I gotta show you this. Check this out. They got an extra car right there. The crew chief hopes they won't need it, but in this business, you gotta be prepared for anything. NASCAR fans know, in each race, they're going to see a few wipeouts. They're part of the sport and part of the thrill. All right, guys, we got a lot of damage right side. Luckily, the driver is usually fine, but the cars get banged up plenty. 
Even the slightest ding can ruin the aerodynamics. So no matter how small the crash, when the race is over, cars head to the shop to get ready for a future race. This rear quarter panel's not too bad, but it's still gotta come off. The quarter panel's not straight, and it's got a dent in it, so we need to replace that before we go back to the racetrack. To take off the panel, first, they gotta expose the seam. That means stripping the Bondo body filler and the paint with a right angle grinder that's got a roll lock disc at the business end. Then to cut it off, they pull out the 3M cutting wheel. This joint spans at 13,000 RPM to make clean cuts fast. Grundy, you asked for a quarter panel, so here it is. Thank you very much. That's how they remove a panel. But how do they fix all those scrapes and dents? We're getting an inside look at the whole process. Scotty, we're in the body shop here. What's this right in front of us? What are we going to do? This is a hood, and it's got a few dents. Let's grind. The grinder roughs up the surface of the metal in the dent. Once the dent is roughed up, it's ready for this bazooka to fill it with Bondo. So this is the new 3M Bondo gun. The 3M Bondo gun is a juiced up tool for pros that you can buy too. It blends filler, glaze, and hardener right inside for the perfect mix. Okay, now what happens? We'll take this spreader and just level it out like cement. So how long do you have before you have to uh, scrape it off completely if it gets too hard? Looks like about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> now it's obviously these are going to harden up and all stuff. You just sand it off? Harden it up and uh, hit it with your 3M sander. Grind it. Bond it, sand it, and you're done. That is, except for the paint. No matter how the crash goes down, the fixed up cars all end up here. This is a paint shop at Ralph Fenway Racing. The paint goes on in a temperature controlled spray booth with a turbine powered spray gun. The uh, gun is a Hacu spray, a 3M gun. They just came out with it. We're still getting familiar with them, but we're, we're liking what we see out of them so far. In the booth, the painter breathes through a respirator called a VersaFlow. At $2,000, it's one of the most expensive tools in the shop. It carries purified air from its filter belt through a tube into the face mask. After each coat, the temperature is raised to 120 degrees to speed evaporation and dry the paint. If it's done right, you'll never know the car was in a smash up at all. So we saw him take off the back quarter panel, but here's the fix. Just put a new one on, weld it, patch it, paint it down, get it back on the track. Here's a NASCAR tools fact. NASCAR race cars don't have functional headlights or taillights. Instead, they have realistic decals. Coming up, find out what this jet engine's doing on the track. But first, we'll get an inside look at what it's like to drive in a real NASCAR race car. Oh my God. This is bad! I'm having a great time! This is awesome! We're tearing up the oval! Next! Temperature in a NASCAR race car can get up to 140 degrees. To keep cool, drivers wear air-conditioned helmets. Nothing's more fun than watching a NASCAR race, especially a biggie like the 600-mile Coca-Cola 600. Thanks to my new buddy and race car driver Greg Biffle, I'm watching from the best seat in the house, on top of the pit box. That's where the pit crew keeps their tools. I'm trying to keep my eye on Biffle in the number 16 car, but it ain't easy. These guys fly by at 200 miles an hour. Ever wonder what it's like to be in the driver's seat? Well, there's a track nearby where anybody can give it a try. Today, I'm at Concord Speedway. I'm about to get into this joint and tear this track up. It's called NASCAR Racing Experience. Kind of like driving school, only with a 500 horsepower stock car fresh from the series. How fast does it go? Uh, we're gonna get up to about 180 miles an hour. Woo! Yeah. yeah! I like it, I like it. First, you gotta get into your fire suit. It's made of Nomex. 
a high-tech fiber that won't melt or burn, even if your car starts to. Then you grab a helmet. Hi Grundy, my name is Sebastian. Right on. I'll be your driver today. Okay, cool. You ready for that? I'm ready, I'm Are ready. Are you shaking yet? I got, uh, this is my driving All right, all right. Sebastian's gonna take me for a few laps, so I know what I'm in for. Now to get in, I want you to put your left leg in first. Okay. So that you're right. No doors? That's because there's a solid roll cage under the metal to keep you safe. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Five-point harness. Oh, 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 geez. I'm ready, baby. All right, let's go. in the driver's seat. It's so tight in these cars, they put the steering wheel on after you get in. Okay, now I want you to pull on it, make sure it's locked. There we yeah. go. Flip the switch and start her up. Yeah! <laughs> Those window nets keep the driver's arms from falling out in the crash. My man Chris is with me on the radio. What is your RPM there? About two grand. Okay, yeah, you want to pick it up? Try to get up to about 3,000 RPM this time. There's no speedometer in these things, only attack. Feel comfortable, you can pick it up to 4,000. Try to hit 4,000 RPM this time. There you go, looking good, you're doing a real good job. Thank you. Have a good time, Kurt. I'm having a great time, and it's awesome. This next time by, it's going to be your checker flag. Stay in the gas, just like a normal lap. Copy that. Get on the throttle hard there. There you go. This was awesome. Wow. That was great. Ah. Good job, buddy. That was amazing. Good. Yeah. Oh, man. I know I wasn't going 200 miles an hour like the pros, but it still wore me out. Oh. NASCAR. Now that's an experience. Even if they can't get behind the wheel, NASCAR fans get plenty of thrills just watching. More than 150,000 show up, some with tents, trailers, and homemade platforms to get a view as the cars thunder by. Here they come now! Oh. Others watch their heroes on the largest high-def television in the world. It's 80 feet tall, 200 feet wide, and 165,000 pounds. Big screen or live action. These fans aren't just at the race, they're part of it. Still ahead, find out what this jet engine is doing on the track. Then, I'm in the pit box when my man Greg Biffle takes the lead. More from NASCAR coming up. checked out how they keep it ready for action. Since NASCAR tires have no tread, they can't keep grip on wet or dirty pavement. So to keep the track clean and dry, they call in the Jets. This right here is a J60 jet engine, blows over 500 degrees, keeps the track nice and dry. These truck mounted jet dryers get their jets right off an Air Force plane. And they blow dry the road with 3,000 pounds of thrust. Back on the pit box. 
Biffle just pulled away to start lap 328. That was the last pit stop, and it was flawless. Beautiful. Biffle grabs the number two spot coming into the backstretch. Number two. Then Biffle takes the lead. But three drivers run out of gas just before the checkered flag comes down. Greg Biffle's number 16 race car is one of them. He finishes 13th. <laughs> and that's how they roll them, fix them, and keep them running at NASCAR. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Greg Biffle and the Pitbulls were so close. Just a couple drops of fuel made the difference. But we'll see you next time. There you go. Awesome. Now this is a cool tool, baby. There you go. Thank you. Thanks.